Hey, we kick off this playoff frenzy at Mannheim Township. Thanks to the cheerleaders for that welcoming cheer. The wait is over for the 6A quarterfinals after a bye week. First Blue Streaks possession. Have you seen this before? Hayden Johnson on a rope to Landon Kennel. 50 yards on the house call. Coach Evans likes what he sees on the big screen. He wants to watch it again. Next drive, Declan Clancy shows off the power run game. He later takes a short plunge home to make it 13-0 home team. And then Johnson, watch this time, Lex Haberbosch looks it into the hands for the score. Students are fired up as the Blue Streaks take this one. They advance a little bit farther. 44-8 is your final score. Welcome to week two of the playoffs here on the High School Football Frenzy. I'm Todd Sadowski. We have Lindsey Barna, Evan Brooks, Ryan Yee, and Alex Cauley coming at you in just a little bit. But... We start, as always, with our frenzy game of the week. Andrew Callista in Lancaster County, Susquehanna Township, and Mannheim Central look to take another step in the district playoffs. Right from the kickoff, this one a crazy game. Mannheim Central is up 10, 31-21 at the end of the second quarter, but Township grabs the momentum as Isaiah Riley skies for this interception and the Tribe go into the locker room with momentum, but that quickly evaporates. Indians backed up to start the third. Torin Evans picked off Aaron Enterline. Diving interception returned for zero yards. Or the sideline goes crazy. Jackson Brubaker fires up the crowd as the Barons now lead 38 to 21. Tribe fans remain confident. They should be. Evans bounces back in the fourth. This one a dart to Darian Brown on the money. And just like that, it's 38-28. Township flying their colors and they are not done. Next possession, it is Evans to Zakir Leaks. He's wide open, no need for a plumber. 65 yards plus down at the one. Hannah cashes it in and it's 38 34. Indians jacked up. Manager Brubaker looks on late in the fourth in confidence, and he should. Barron's quarterback, Zach Hahn, steps up, rolls right, lofts it up, and he finds his man. It's Enterline, hauls it in, and he seems pretty happy with that catch. In the pay dirt, the sideline, they are two. Hannah, though, isn't done. They put a drive together, but it stalls out when Evans is sacked deep in Barron territory by Bodie Seipel. That seals the deal. 45-34, Coach Hahn proud of his team's gutsy performance. Victory, I think we're a little bit of a mass unit right now, we, uh, but we found a way to win. Uh, they, they really stressed us out early in the game and I thought we got our feet underneath us and then it was just a, it was a battle back and forth second half. They just, they're a good team. A thrilling victory and one to remember for the Barons. This one at number 604 as they advance in the playoffs. More frenzy coming up guys. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. This is Andrew's last appearance on the high school football frenzy. He's off next Friday and leaving us soon after. What an awesome teammate he's been for seven years. Going to miss his energy on the show. More football now. The first team we're seeing tonight that actually played last week is Hershey. The Trojans erase a 21-point deficit to stun Exeter Township. Tonight, they travel to face the top seed in 5A, New Oxford. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Well, the Ox ready to go. They've been unbeatable at home going 5-0 at their house this season, but the Trojans, a physical team, they come straight at you. Angel Cabrera squeezes in for the touchdown. And plays like this are common for the Colonials. Adris Medevic out wide to Brennan Holmes. He looks down, keeps his feet in bounds. And once he's straight, he zips in for the score. How about another short touchdown run from Hershey, though? This time, it's going to be Sean Elliott doing the work as the teams go back and fourth, over the left side, he travels. And while the Trojans take the workmanlike approach, New Oxford prefers the spectacular variety. Watch Clayton Nieves angles his way to the left sideline, then proceeds to cut all the way back across to the middle and then to the right side. They're all worth six points, though. And here comes another one from Cabrera for Hershey as they go on the road and knock out the top seed, 34 to 28. And you know, it's hard to top a regular season rivalry game unless the stakes somehow become a district championship, Evan. A mere two miles separates Camp Hill and Trinity. Evan Brooks is here to tell us if the Lions or the Shamrocks earn the hardware. Yeah, Todd, this one is always a good one. We had a preview of this one back in the regular season. The Shamrocks were able to edge the Lions out 14 to 13. Trinity is hoping home field advantage helps them repeat as district champs, and the Lions are looking for some sweet revenge. Camp Hill has already upset Anvil Cleona, so they try to make the Shamrocks next on that list. First possession for Trinity. They are in business in the red zone as Penn State commit Messiah Mickens takes it in for six. Good start for the Trinity. 
the DeSham Rocks, but the Camp Hill Lions don't go away. Quarterback Drew Branstetter drops back and fires a laser over the middle to Noah Doy. He does the rest and flips his way into the end zone. Nice acrobatics, and the Lions tie it at seven. To the second half we go. Lions up three until this. Kieran Finnegan lines it up and nails the short field goal to tie it at 13. We said it was a good one. The Lions with a chance on a game-winning drive. Branstetter leading them down the field all day in the pocket and threads the needle to Tommy Corbin to inch them closer to the end zone. Then on the next play, Branstetter floats one to Kobe Moore. He circles around and reaches over the goal line. The refs come in and say yes. Touchdown. What a game as Camp Hill claims the District 3 to a title. 20 to 13 is the final. I'm so happy for our guys. We bet all year long. We got into the playoffs, which we wanted to do. We knew we could make some noise in the playoffs. We did the first game. Came back with a tough Trinity team that we play out tough every year. Uh, ball just bounced our way tonight, and I'm so happy for our guys. It's going to be chippy. We, we, we know these guys. We grew up with these guys. Uh, so our kids stayed focused the entire game. Uh, we had no personal fouls, which was great. We, 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 we really got well in the moment. We enjoyed the time that we had tonight. Yeah, what a win for the Lions, who clinched their first district title since 2020. Yeah, we keep the playoff party going from there. It's on the East Pennsboro where the Panthers welcome in Lampeter Strasburg. The Pioneers have had two weeks to put their loss against Wyoming Missing behind them. Pick this one up in the second quarter. Trent Wagner has all day in the pocket looking for a receiver downfield. He can't find anyone, so he takes it in himself, outruns the Panthers' defense for a touchdown and puts up puts LS up 14. Then the Pioneers' defense shows up. Keith Oates looking deep and fires deep for his man Brecken Swope, but it's intercepted by Dan Hur. Two on the day. That drive would stall, and the Panthers would come back and add three points to get it to overtime, but Lambert Strasburg pulls it out in a thriller. Double overtime, overtime victory, 23 to 20 is the final. Powder, pull, to be victory. Why don't we just make it three in a row in Cumberland County? It's the Mustangs and Colts getting after it at West Shore Stadium. Southwestern quarterback Bryce Graham, great run fake. He keeps his stay with us. We pick it back up when he completes the pass to Colton Baldwin, who runs it into the end zone front for a touchdown from there. Cedar Cliff goes to work. Quarterback Bennett Seacrest completes a pass to his main man, Nathan Lusk. He's held up but keeps those legs moving and moves the chains for Cedar Cliff. Then Seacrest hands it off to his running back, Eric Shriver, who books it down the field. He picks up the first down and then some, and the Colts are in business. Same drive, different quarter. Seacrest then hits Lusk again. He evades a tackle and runs into the end zone. Colts march into the semifinals. 31-7 to is the final. We're taking a timeout on the frenzy when we return. Lindsey Barner brings us the action from Central Dolphin at Central York. Plus, we'll make stops at Cumberland Valley, Cocalico, and more. The high school football frenzy is coming right back. <laughs> 